Hey everyone, it's Dave here and welcome to probably the most important video of the year. It's uh, basically morning after Christmas. I do look like shit per usual, it's just that the next day I have a hairdresser appointment. So I'm just unlucky to be just trash. <laughs> Sorry I wasn't uploading in the Christmas time because uh, it's Christmas. Here gotta spend some time with family at least then. <laughs> we have pretty big stuff today, I told you that I wanted to do something more ambitious than last year, which was kind of like a trash talking of Oculus Quest games kind of list that they released, which was very biased and not like accurate kind of. This year they did the same thing, but they pretty much just kind of shifted towards the popularity contest in the certain kind of genres of the releases. So I didn't want to bother with this shit like this year and kind of create something appropriate to the platform. And I'm not gonna do like this, you know, top 10 quest games 2020 because that's too easy. <laughs> so the base idea is kind of a tier list. It's essentially a type of ranking to compare kind of like everything all together. I'm gonna be basing pretty much everything on quality updates because some hosts just abandon the games they just release and just there you go, have fun with this. <laughs> Price, responsive from the developers, gameplay, pretty much kind of everything that goes together to the game. I played every single game and some I played all the way, some I just did an overview. I'm gonna try not to be biased because there are some games that I of course love, but for the purposes of this video I'm gonna kind of like look on overall project. There is kind of a lot to go through because this year they released like kind of 60 I think titles so we were starting from the beginning from January. First game of 2020 surprisingly it was 2MD. I would say it was fun it was not uh, like very complicated for kind of a football game. It lacked updates but apparently recently they kind of like stepped up their game and uh, started actually updating the game so I'm kind of interested what's gonna be like in the future of this but it's like currently sitting at kind of like at C tier for me. Fail Factory. <laughs> oh boy F stands for fail that's pretty much it. <laughs> it was not complicated at all I think the only good thing about it is the price because it's probably one of the cheapest things on the quest store very much kids game very much those vibes I mean it works so I would say it's in the E tier or something like that I'll think about some titles later <laughs> if they should be like lower on higher like kind of in perspective when I will have everything kind of on the screen next one was Audica it was actually starting at the time like this kind of rhythm game galore I'm not a real game person I like I liked Audica but at the same time I didn't see much updates from it. The gameplay seemed fine but like at the time there were so many Rift games that I was already like fucking annoyed. <laughs> I would say it's C tier. It's definitely missing some things for me. Doctor Who. I actually did not play this and I'm very surprised because I used to play every game kind of that releases. The only thing I know about this it was like fucking boggy as hell. But I'm not gonna like kind of put it on the tier list because I did not play game myself so I can't judge it from kind of like the opinions of others that would not be fair at all so i'm skipping this one ghost giant i really like that i would say with adventure games on quest they tend to lack of good endings and sometimes the explanation of the story ghost giant was definitely one of those games that kind of like ended i think a little bit too soon not explaining the whole storyline but i had fun with this game like it has some humor and just some funny moments i definitely consider this game in a bit here for sure free diver triton essentially one of the only diving games we have on quest i loved kind of the immersion of this game when you were swimming because you were actually doing kind of like swimming movements like in real life as well as the graphics were not bad at all i would say it was a little bit short but it was definitely a interesting experience especially for me when i used to be diving in egypt and stuff like that i have a history with that 11 table tennis it's very basic but at the same time the game is basic like the actual table tennis so it was kind of hard to do an overview of that because there's nothing much complicated with the mechanics but they work pretty much perfectly so I have nothing against the game at all as well as it has a pretty active community very supportive uh, developers and with updates and stuff like that so I can definitely appreciate that it's definitely not my genre at all but I can definitely see this in like a B tier kind of sub that but I'm gonna put it on a color space some environments there were very like eye candy it's basically a simulator on acid or something. The only problem I remember was that you could not color singular things. It was basically just laying out colors in stacks. Some environments kinda wouldn't let you color what you want essentially, so. It's missing definitely some things and I'm putting it on the seed here. 
down the rabbit hole. Very similar to Ghost Giant. It's just a thing with adventure games and quests. This one, however, was kind of like uneventful endings. The gameplay itself was great. It's very similar to Ghost Giant. So I'm putting basically on the same tier as their B team. It had great potential, especially from the trailer. It looked great, and the gameplay was fun. It was nothing, something groundbreaking. But when the game is fun and you enjoy it, that's pretty much what counts, right? Unfortunately, it is one of the games that was pretty much just dropped after the release, so it's just basically staying dead on the store. It's not bad, but I'm putting in on these simply because of the support. The Room VR. I like puzzle games. This one was too scary for me for some reason, but I love the vibes of kind of like a detective who solves puzzles to kind of unveil the mystery and stuff. I'm pretty sure the Room is not updated as well as the rest kind of dropped games. I don't even think it got the quest to update. I oh know it actually did, so I'm pretty sure it looks way better than in Quest 2. So that's great that they update the game. I'm kind of like checking everyone in a while for the updates and now I'm kind of like checking and verifying if actually the game was kind of updated at all after the release. So for that I'm definitely putting in the B. O shape. Next rhythm game on the list. I actually don't really remember that I had kind of anything bad at all to say about it. I do see that it gets constant updates so I can appreciate that. As well as it has like collaboration between kind of other games. So they're definitely working on it and just staying with it. I value that, even though it's not my genre. So it's B tier. Lies Beneath. Not my cup of tea, when I played it I could not play it more for like 15 minutes. It was so immersively scary. I think it was like the most scariest kind of thing for me, especially about the graphics and stuff like that. I would love to do this playthrough, but I couldn't. Unfortunately, it was dropped after the release. I did not see any updates about it, but it's still a good game to kind of play and see what's up. Definitely, so I'm gonna put it on the B tier. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna run down on the space here. God damn it. Guns and Stories. Again, very kind of basic, overdone gameplay. It was cheap. I would say it's on the same level as Fail Factory. It had some fun moments with the comedy, but that's pretty much it. So it's E tier for me. Iron Lights, sword fighting game that I thought I'm gonna like but I didn't. This kind of slow-mo gameplay did not really speak to me at all. The game itself looks pretty snazzy so I can see that. As well as it gets constant updates, not like once every month, but it introduces kind of like new things for the hardcore players especially. <laughs> I'm gonna put it on the C tier. Audio Shield, another rhythm game. God damn it, it was basically a year of rhythm games. This one, while it had its legacy back in the day, on Quest it didn't transfer at all for me. It had some unique features that you could pretty much just upload your music and then it would automatically generate the maps for you. But it wasn't very accurate, it was just pretty much there to play, but like it wasn't very consistent. I'm pretty sure it was dropped as well, so I'm gonna put it on the D. Pixel Rip 1995, <laughs> the year I was born pretty much. So that means I was pretty much not playing those games that were in this game. Game. The only thing I remember from this game was that some levels were unnecessarily long. It was pretty much prolonging the game that it should not be longer than it had to. But I'm gonna put it on the B nevertheless. And I'm gonna put myself down because I'm running out of space. Pottery VR. This one was so fun to me, I don't know even why. And I'm so bummed about the fact that it was like dropped because it had great potential for me, especially that this game pretty much would convince me to buy a 3D printer to print the stuff that I would make in this game. It was so good. So having said that, I can't put it like lower or higher than C because nothing annoys me more than the game that was abandoned for just profit. Like, it's just sad to me. Audio Trip. Here goes another rip game. I would think it's in the same tier as O Shave because it gets constant updates and it is similar in the style of Synth Riders gameplay, which I enjoyed the most in rhythm titles for sure. As well as it had like custom tracks professional UI and more dancing mechanics which I appreciate more because I was a dancer back in the day so this kinda fit for me. B tier. Mini Moto Racing X. The game that we thought is gonna be the leader of racing genre on Quest but it fell down pretty quickly after the release. Especially because the locomotion was just horrendous. It had some fun modes but like this game did not translate to the community at all. As well as what the fuck is this? This is not transparent. Like who the hell? Putting this on D. 
Tetris Effect. The thing about this is that I don't enjoy Tetris as a game, so it was hard to kinda do an overview of that because it's just, to me, it was boring. But this game kinda elevates the actual gameplay with music and just kinda environment, which was one of the most gorgeous things on Quest you could ever see. Definitely some acid vibes. I think it lacks kinda updates. I think something is uh, coming in like in the near future like multiplayer or something like that but I wouldn't say it's like the best game of quest or whatever but it looks gorgeous to me so I'm gonna put it on the B Space Team VR. It's one of those multiplayer games that look like kind of job simulator and just cooperation with just solving the tasks. I would say it was very groundbreaking. It is actually fun. I did not play with anyone because no one was playing at the time of the release. It gets some updates, so it seems like I guess people are playing, but it is very average, so I'm gonna put it on the C definitely. Elixir. Pretty much the pioneer of hand tracking games that were starting to release in this year. It was a great demo. It was a very short but very sweet. It pretty much presented to you the capabilities of hand trackings and in the future what's gonna come with that. I would say you can play it whenever you want because it is actually free. It's short but it presents the mechanics. The comedy is there so I'm gonna put it on the B. I can see this B tier is gonna be like very big so I'm gonna just include everything here in the cloud because I don't think any tier is gonna surpass the limit. Propat Talk Golf. That was the moment when we starting to see those golf games on Quest. The more serious one because there was like on the release day when Quest 1 back in the day released. Propat, while it was professional it seems, didn't get many updates up until Walkabout released. So I'm pretty sure this game would stay to be dead if the other game would not try to kinda take the throne. I still think Propat looks way more convenient. But speaking from a person that is not a golf person at all, the mechanics looked better for me, so I'm gonna put it on the C tier. Premium Bowling. While the idea of bowling was great, it was dropped again, one of those. On the release day it seemed wonky, nothing groundbreaking, and maybe hopefully we're gonna get a better bowling game in the future. But I'm gonna put it on the D. Trover saves the universe. I did not watch Rick and Morty at all, but I can definitely say after playing the whole game, you don't need to know the universe, because the comedy can translate to someone who did not watch the show at all. I think Trover is a stellar game. So funny for like an adventure game. The length was it great, the price point. It is a great experience for me and I definitely remember some of those things. Putting in on the A, definitely. Phantom Cover-Ups. Our Metal Gear Solid or Splinter Cell of the platform <laughs> played whole game. It was great. I think that was the moment when we started to notice that the games could handle great graphics on Quest 1. The whole concept was actually very risky because I would never think that stealth game in a kayak would ever work. So Endreams really pushed forward with this. So it's definitely A tier for sure because I mean it gets some updates but they are not necessarily a part of the game. It is pretty much just kinda utilizing the mechanics that were already inbuilt with the campaign. But it is a great game. Shooty Skies Overdrive. I actually liked it. It's definitely a game that you have to sacrifice a lot of space for because it's pretty much a room scale experience. It felt very much like mobile. I don't think it gets kinda significant updates. I saw some events but that's pretty much it. For the price point and gameplay, I think this could be great if it would get some significant updates with variety of gameplay but I'm putting this on C for now. Wonderglade. It was a big fail to me. Jesus Christ. For the game that was, I'm pretty sure, free on the Rift Store and it transitioned to Quest, asking for horrendous price for the content, I don't want to sacrifice mm, a lot of time for this. FTR. Layers of Fear. Holy shit, so spooky. I could not play this as well as Lies Beneath. I thought the level of <laughs> jump scares were just too much. I think I dropped out on the second one. It's definitely one time experience, not a lot of updates, but like you can't really update the horror game to me. I think, you know, it kind of is based on the creativity itself. I would say for a jump scare junkie, this is definitely a good title, but I'm gonna put it on the scene nevertheless because comparing to Lies Beneath, it definitely is a little bit below that, for sure. FNAF Help Wanted. Another horror game. 
Life is legendary, I mean everybody knows this universe. The quest port was pretty snazzy, I think. It might kinda lack in graphics department, but definitely the immersion was there, like you would actually play this game like in real life. I think it got recently the DLC, so that's pretty fun. I'm not a huge FNAF fan, but I'm going to feel you're gonna put it on the B tier for sure, because it is quite a lot. Coaster combat. If we're talking about overall the roller coasters, you know, it is this genre in VR that it's the most affected by the locomotion, so not a lot of games work with that. Coaster combat was actually pretty comfortable to me. I'm a person that does not really get motion sick at all nowadays, so I could like enjoy the gameplay of it. It was basic, definitely. I think it promised multiplayer, but it was not at all in the game. It was dropped as well. It's one of those games that I'm gonna put in D tier because you can just miss it. <laughs> it's the best roller coaster for sure, because there's not a lot of them now. In Death Unchained, definitely the best archery that I've tried so far in VR. It's too bad it's like a little bit horrorish, so it's too scary for me to actually play like all the way, but it's pretty much just loved by the developers. Constant updates, competitions, events. It's one of those games that was gonna stay on quest platform and just pretty much dominate the runner itself of archery roguelike gameplay for sure. So it's definitely A tier. Onward. That was the time when the shooter started to appear on quest. I'm not a huge fan of it. I think it was definitely ambitious for quest at the time because quest 2 was not a thing. The gameplay itself was too slow for me, but it is this meal simulator kind of thing. I'm more of an action person myself, as well as the mechanics for kinda a newbie or a noob were hard, like it was hard to navigate. I'm not really sure it gets a lot of updates nowadays, I think it does, but I didn't see anything major to be honest, so I'm gonna put it on the C. Gravity Lab. Not my thing, it worked pretty fun, I don't see many updates to it, I think it the last one was like Quest 2, which is pretty much standard for the platform. There's not much to say about it, about the gravity and just, you know, mechanics. It's definitely something very specific for people who like physics and just kinda gravity mechanics, but I'm not really a big fan of it at all, but I'm gonna put it on the C nevertheless. I think I'm just gonna prolong this space here and try to manage it somehow. I don't know how it's gonna be later on. I think we were like halfway through. <laughs> Echo VR was a huge title when it dropped. Unfortunately, I feel like because of the free to play model, it was just overrun by kids and stuff that essentially I think I don't even know if anyone plays it seriously nowadays. Maybe if they are, they play it in like a group that they know each other. The game itself is great. So it's very sad to see that it's not getting like huge, you know, response. Some events are just like, it was scheduled to be a sports, you know, VR one. And it still is kind of, but it's not like blowing up currently. It's kind of like forgotten in the layers of other titles. I'm gonna put it on the B then. House Flipper VR. I don't know what, why it released back in the day. Essentially that the concept was amazing because of the home renovation and just like kind of modifying your houses. But it was so dumbed down from the PC VR version that it basically felt like a cleaning simulator to me. <laughs> and I don't think it gets any updates nowadays. So I'm putting in on the D. Shooty Fruity. To me wasted potential. It was great gameplay to me. This kind of like job simulator-ish action just bloodshed. It was dropped as well and the actual gameplay seemed repetitive but it was so fun to play. At least for like 15 minutes for something. D tier for sure. Cookout. It is one of those games kind of like in a speed mechanic cooking simulator. While I'm a cook myself by profession, it's very arcadey, but like of course because we're on the quest. It's very cool to play in multiplayer. I think it's one of the games that strive on that. And it's definitely something around kind of family gameplay. But I don't think it's gonna be like, you know, a stellar quest title moving on. It's just gonna be buried down. It's very in a similar fashion to Space Team VR, so I'm gonna put it on the C. Falcon Age, another adventure game that I played all the way. While the concept was very unique with, you know, the Falcon gameplay as a companion, the gameplay itself seemed wonky, especially the combat, Jesus. Like, I failed so many times then, as well as the storyline was just average. While the world design and just like, you know, this kind of open world environment, the game fell short definitely in terms of mechanics and just like complexity of it. So as an adventure game, it's a C tier. 
<laughs> I'm running out of space of myself. <laughs> I'm just gonna put it myself somewhere here. I don't know. <laughs> Hollow point. It felt very average when it released to me. And essentially that I'm an archer and I know about the mechanics. This game was so simple, like too simple for what it should be. An archery simulator kinda rapid fire shooting range. There is not a lot of content there, for sure. It feels like mobile. And it was dropped. <laughs> On top of things. Says so DTR. Void Racer, another racing kind of contender for the platform. Well, the idea of kind of Tron racing thing, I think it was like one of the worst locomotion systems that I've ever experienced. I was so sick after playing like 10 minutes of it. Just Puke City. And it was dropped as well. This is pretty much a forgotten title, so I'm gonna put it on the E. Cubism. It's a very simple concept. It does it very well, although it's basically solving puzzles kind of in the 3D environment. Kind of Tetris-like, but not really. It's kind of like mixed. Cubism was like on side quest actually, as a hand tracking game as well. So it's one of those that just kind of put themselves on the store from their hard work. While it's not groundbreaking, it does its thing. And I'm gonna put it on the B nevertheless. Shuttle Commander. It seemed like Microsoft Flight Simulator from Quest initially. And it's almost impossible to do it, like, come on. I think the only good thing about this was it had an actual historical kinda experiences, as well as original recordings from, like, you know, Space Landing and, or whatever what was going on then. But the game it play itself, it was wonky and just, like, not responsive at all. I was not even sure what was happening most of the time. So I'm gonna put it on the E. Solaris. The thing about this is it's very great, but it released in the times when we were waiting for Population 1 and just like kinda FPSs were on the rise. I don't think this game is like heavily populated and on the release day it was missing some key features like friend system just like overall party modes. But currently I think Solaris stands kinda strong, but we're currently overdone with FPSs overall so it's hard to kinda know the future about it. The actual game seems great, and I'm gonna put it on the B. What about minigolf? So the thing about this bitch is, when I first played it, it seemed shit. Or simple, whatever you wanna say this. But for some reason it like blew up in the community hugely. And as well as the developers put like constant constant updates to this game, I feel like it's one of the most updated game on Quest currently. So I feel like this game pretty much deserves a second chance for me to do an overview and maybe I'm gonna do it in the future, who knows. Initial gameplay was worse than Propat for me, personally, but seeing the love that it gets from the community and kinda like the developers kinda actually take care of this game, as well as the multiplayer and just stuff like that, I think it deserves the spot in the B tier, but I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to see this the second time around. So I'm gonna put it on the B now. Until You Fall, pretty much one of the most expected games for me personally. The best war fighting game so far. Soundtrack's amazing. This game's checked so many boxes with me. It's a workout. It's a fun experience. It's dynamic. Makes you think. It's very high quality. The only, only thing it's, that's missing from this game. It's kind of like the constant updates. The game currently sits at the same stage that it was on the PC VR. And I have no information that anything new is gonna come to this game. But it is such a solid gameplay by itself now that I'm putting it on the A tier for sure. Dash Dash World. So this is the one that my bias kinda comes to place, but not really. Just hear me out. <laughs> this game is stellar. This is the racing game that we want in the Quest Store, for sure. Starting from the graphics, support from the developers, collaboration between YouTubers, the community, mechanics, bug fixes, updates, events, tournaments in the future. For me, this game has it all. I mean, it's no surprise that I praise this game because that's my favorite game on Quest currently and for a long time for sure. This Mario Kart kinda crash team racing bandicoot vibes. Like, it is crazily fun. Crazily polished as well. The most polished game I've seen on Quest. Just attention to detail, that's pretty much it. Easily S tier. <laughs> Tsura. This is an actual like kind of game in real life, but just kind of translated to quest. I remember it did its thing. It's very niche, very specific, not for everyone. Kind of puzzle mahjong. It's hard to explain really. It's very simple, like the mechanics are not hard to understand at all. 
and what you're getting for the price point is uh, iffy iffy to me, so I'm gonna put it on the D. Blaston. It's essentially a copy of the gameplay from Iron Lines but with guns. I actually enjoy it way more. It's essentially you really have to have a big room to enjoy the gameplay of it. Especially in the competitive scene. It's very heavily advertised pretty much everywhere I've seen the ad. It's very cheap for the pr the content you're g getting. Like the actual gameplay is very affordable for everyone. So I'm putting it on the B. Little Witch Academia. We're entering this uh, time when there was a big drop in games like from Japanese kind of sort. This one I feel like for the price point and just like the license, the actual anime was very little in the content that we were getting. Aside from the voice acting, the actual anime. I think I would appreciate this game way more if it was just be a visual novel. Not without any gameplay of this broom racing because it was wonky and not very fun to me. Like I would play the visual novel of it but not the gameplay itself. I didn't care for that at all. So I'm gonna put it on the D. Space Channel 5. Amazing. I love this. It's like combining just crazy the gameplay. The storyline. <laughs> it was just ridiculous to play this. But I can't put it anywhere else other than on the B because the price point for the actual content you're getting is very little. It's not the com even comparable. So while I love the game, like it's sitting on the B for sure in terms of just content itself. Hatsune. Trash. Just trash. <laughs> the only good thing about it is that you can listen to Hatsune soundtrack, but that's pretty much it. The gameplay itself was the worst from all the room games that there is. And saying by a lot. As well as overpriced, Jesus fucking Christ. Get the hell out of my face in the F tier. Homestar VR. I don't really have much to say about this, it was pretty much just planetarium VR. It sits at the same place as Shadow Commander for sure. I feel like just looking at the stars in real life is much kind of like appealing to me than here. So it's E tier. Res Infinite. The actual gameplay seemed very fun. It actually felt like a Go game to me. It was not very like quest quality, but it was definitely something very unique by itself. Not much to say about it because my overview just got screwed over by the gameplay. But I'm putting this definitely on the same level as Little Witch Academia. Sign and Sinners. There's definitely no comparison to any game on Quest. Easily the best game of Quest 2020 for sure. Everybody knows this. Everyone that thinks otherwise is delusional at this point. It's kinda unfair because it was ported from the PC VR to Quest. The actual port was like a miracle. Like it was actually crazy that they could pull it off. Especially for Quest 1. Jesus. This is the zombie horror game. Overall, currently, there were many to try, take it down, but essentially, you can't deny it's sitting in the S tier. Like, come on. Star Shaman. I feel like no one even talks about this game, but it's pretty solid. It's essentially if we're talking about kind of like soundtrack, dancey, not really rhythm game, but I would say kind of like a space pirate trainer vibes. This is definitely fun, especially with the recent update. The game seems much more fluid, at least it's not wonky. I feel like it's definitely missing some marketing because it is fun. So I'm putting this on B. Population 1. I think currently the most popular game on Quest. I'm not a huge Battle Royale player, but this game really like blew up. And for the right reasons. The only thing I'm worried about is the future in terms of kinda events and just like variety of content later on. Because essentially if you wanna survive as a battle royale kinda game, you really need to keep it fresh in terms of content. As well as the most annoying thing for me in this game and I would play it more if they would remove or like add an option to turn off two scopes that are going on. When you're like closing to your eye there's one scope and when it's like on the side there's this red one in the like distance. But I can't really play like just fluidly while having both at the same time. Like that is so annoying and just like in shooters in general I don't get why it's an option even. But I'm putting in the A tier for sure. Blair Witch. It's definitely one of the scariest things I've experienced this as well. I could not play it more than 15 minutes. Very similarly vibes to Lies Beneath, but I think Blair Witch is very psychological. But the actual game is, eh, in terms of graphics, is like not looking good at all. Like the dog was so pixelated. That was scary to me, not like the environment. So I'm putting Blair Witch on the C tier. I'm gonna clean it up later on because it's getting hazy. I'm just gonna swipe it for now here. Star Wars Galaxy's Edge was pretty promising release at the time. For some reason it fell short. For me it was a significant upgrade from Vader Immortal, in terms of gameplay at least. 
Essentially it was very straightforward and it was using the mechanics from the games from PC VR that was never seen on Quest but people were familiar with it so they were more critical of it itself. I thought it was fine, I'm definitely waiting for more tales, you know this kind of like similar that uh, there was a temple of darkness, that was definitely a highlight for me. But I'm putting in on B. Aldeus is definitely a spiritual kind of sequel to Tokyo Kronos. Aldeus does it better, for sure. It still has some things to upgrade, for example for the next game or whatever they're gonna consider. But in terms of gameplay, the storyline, just like kind of the pace of the actual game, it's great. Putting in on the B as well. Contractors. The game by itself seems rough, but when we are comparing directly to Onward, it actually seems way better. Especially I think it's just more action, that's why kinda I enjoy it way more. But it's missing a lot of features that are kinda like quality of life, that will definitely help the future of this game for sure. It seems like rough around the edges, but like if it's gonna get polished in the future, it's gonna be a solid kinda shooter. So I'm gonna put it on the B as well. It's definitely a year of, I would say, more than average titles, but like it's very like staying in the middle for sure. Prison Bus. God, I didn't get it at all what it's about with this game. They said it's like a tycoon simulation of job simulator, but like Jesus Christ, for now, this is what we were like getting for Quest or Quest 2. It was rough. It's just rough. And it's landing on the E. Warhammer Battle Sister. You didn't see a lot of gameplay from me from this game, but it's coming. But I can tell you now that while the gameplay of this is just a little bit weird, like it doesn't really feel consistent nor realistic per se. It's weird to say realistic with this, like something does not feel right. I think this game kind of strives on the actual storyline. I think the actual environment and just like universe of the Warhammer itself sells this game more than the gameplay itself. I'm gonna preview hard on this and I'm gonna put it on the CTR then. Because it had huge potential, it just kind of fell flat and average. Missed. This one is hard to review as well because I was not around when the original game released. It's a puzzle game but like it's so uninventful and like very not leading you by hand, which you know, it's just this genre and like a legendary legacy. Basically this game strives on that mechanic to not lead you <laughs> anywhere. I can't really put it anywhere else other than C because I just did not see appealing it for me to even do a whole playthrough. Not essentially because it's hard, it's essentially it's a waste of time thinking about just tribal things. Like it was just not rewarding. Jurassic World Aftermath. The last release of the year, hopefully, because I don't think something is coming think in the next week to like fuck up my tier list. Jurassic on paper seems great. I did not play it a lot because it released basically before Christmas, before this mayhem started. So I'm just gonna put it on the limp here and gonna put it on B because I've heard some things that it's very short and that the trailers kinda not represent the gameplay at all. It's very simple, just like kinda introductionary for the new quest players. But I really like the idea of cell shading, just like in Life's Beneath kinda style. And I feel like it's gonna stay on B even though I'm gonna finish the whole playthrough of it, so we're just gonna put it there. Alright, so I'm just gonna split up the recording and just kinda see and analyze the list if I'm gonna agree it with completely and just clean it up because this is pure fucking mayhem. <laughs> see you in a bit! It's uh, 8 p.m. <laughs> I've been slaving away the whole day with editing and just like making sure this video goes till Sunday. So I did some cleaning up and here's the final list. Now I was thinking again, kind of analyzing what's where and just like uh, the placements. And I can confidently say that I stand behind this uh, list pretty much every title that I put on in the category and that's like my closing thoughts for 2020. It looks pretty snazzy, not gonna lie. <laughs> it turned out somehow. <laughs> it's definitely something that maybe we're gonna do next year as well. It is very taxing. Like it's not something that I should have do done in like one day. It's definitely a project for a few days. <laughs> Alright, so let's go with the giveaway. <laughs> Basically just like last year we were doing a giveaway of the <laughs> channel charity. This time we had eight entries which is like an upgrade and I'm comfortable to say that I can't reward everyone <laughs> because I'm gonna go bankrupt <laughs> and YouTube is not something that I earn a lot of money or something although I got my first sponsorship so that's fun as well it was not a fortune though so <laughs> this time around we had eight entries and I'm picking five of them to kind of like not feel bad about not choosing everyone but at the same time I think that's like a, a solid number that's gonna be sufficient 
I wrote out everyone with numbers and who kind of participated. Yes, I'm doing it in paint. What about it? And I we we're just pretty much gonna randomize it. It's so ghetto, but that's like my brand, right? And to not feel extra dumb, <laughs> it had to go through random integral set generator because then if we were gonna pick one number, it should go out from the set, right? I think that's how math works. So here we go. <laughs> Okay, here it is. So it's Yabra, Kari, Aloe, Jim, and Virtual Gaming. <laughs> Actually, that's kind of funny because three people who unfortunately did not win today won one giveaway at least on my channel. So I guess I don't feel that bad because everyone at the end of the day got something from me at some point and my wallet is safe. <laughs> so those people here, however you want, message me or like, I don't know, Oculus, email, Instagram, whatever. Basically how the gifting system works now with Oculus is that you have to send me your email that is attached to the Oculus account. And then basically the process is that you're gonna get a email with a gift code inside. Then to redeem it, you go to the store, you go to the concrete game that you got the gift code, and then you redeem it like in the section that is like next to the button to install or like play. It's basically it's gonna be like three dots. And then on the list is a redeem code message or something. That's how it works nowadays. Right, let's do the closing thoughts because this video is way too long already <laughs> yeah no this channel is my baby last year i had one subs like pretty much at the same moment and now we were like over 500 with it is crazy to me because i started this thing from basically zero and every youtuber you know says that but like i literally started from zero i still remember how i edited my videos on my phone and basically just like blowing up the battery <laughs> and now i'm basically just sitting with my custom built pc basically and working my way not really that profession that I would assume or everyone would want to be but I'm happy with um, what I'm doing basically I sacrifice a lot here especially like my time because having two jobs and this channel is like very taxing pretty much on everything else but it's not something that I think about because I enjoy it and that's part of my life essentially it's hard to tell what's gonna happen in the next year you know by natural progression I'm gonna hit like 1000 eventually and that's gonna be as well as a huge milestone because that's the moment where I could apply for like ads or whatever. And that's gonna be something like a little bit different. I'm gonna explain it to you, my philosophy with that. Nevertheless, I care about this channel. I read pretty much every comment there is. I respond whenever I can. Like on the grand scheme of things, my channel is nothing but for me, it's everything kinda. It's very cliche, but it is. We're gonna continue the normal schedule of uh, uploads, like the playthroughs and stuff like that. I have huge library scheduled and as well as now I have one week off from work. So I'm gonna be just recording, 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 but as well as I want to rest and recharge batteries for the next year because it's gonna be crazy. I mean, my life progresses like each year gets crazier and crazier, but each year gets better and better in terms of kind of like life. Like I can safely say that this year was the best year of my life. That's how it is. Every year I say this because that's how I progress. It's kind of weird to say that this year was the best year of my life when there was like, you know, the quarantine and it's still happening and so much shit is happening in the world. So I'm just very grateful for whatever is happening pretty much. But yeah, see you in the VR.